So I was thinking today, hmm, I have an idea for a new video. One that I've never actually done on this very simple topic. Hmm. Welcome, this is Michael W. Ford. I decided, as you can see by the statue at the beginning, that there was a certain type of video that I have actually never done. And, uh, you know, when I have this thought in my head, I think, well, I must have done it years ago, but I haven't. So, I'm going to. And it's really a simple video, and it is... Which of my books do you begin with? What is the focus of them? In kind of a type of number, like uh, what do I start with, then where do I go? So that's what we're going to focus on today. And I'm going to really give you a basic simplistic outline and give you some key points to many of my titles. Not all of my titles will be in this. And I'm really focusing on First, Luciferian philosophy, magical practice, and then expanding into the different uh, kind of emerging and ever-fluid traditions within the adversarial current. So, many years ago, going back to the 90s, my magical initiation was kind of on this... Uh, I had been through many different groups, initiatory groups and schools of thought, left-hand path, but at a point I was determined I found a resonance in Aleister Crowley's Magic Book 4, or Magic in Theory and Practice, and I began practicing basic rituals like uh, the ritual of the Holy Guardian Angel, um, Liber Semic and recording actually uh, on an eight track cassette or reel to reel recording Crowley's Book of the Law line by line in eight layers with uh, ritual music that I was making behind, um, which was uh, issued in the late 90s under the name of Psychonaut, before Psychonaut 75. This was done during my first intensely devotional um, Liber Semic working or to attain the Holy Guardian Angel or what was to become my daemon. Um, in that process, and these rituals of the daemon began in the mid to late 90s, but at different phases in different years, I have different workings that I do to strengthen and reconnect and refocus that. And it's usually entailed upon an, an abyss crossing experience. And what I mean by that is where you understand and burn away all the illusions that the ego builds upon it and really cuts down to the core traits. So, in my early practice, going into the 2000s, the early Luciferian witchcraft magical uh, coven and the uh, works that would become that book, I was uh, happily surprised. And the vessel of the priesthood of Lucifer, as a Luciferian, my task was to define what makes a Luciferian. Is this just another name for a Satanist? What are the differences? So... Part of my initiation, because I was very bad with articulating it to people who didn't have an understanding of magic, was to um, gain the insight and the skill set to do that. And uh, over a period of time, I did, and I, I uh, really focused and articulated the key traits of what Luciferianism is. Now, 
many of my early books of journeys are records of what I was doing at the time. So I had very little, especially the er, the first two books, uh, Book of the Witch Moon and Lucifer and Witchcraft, which was originally a series of small chat books uh, based on our pra our Luciferian practices in Houston and Coven Malefica. Uh, these were only meant for really a handful of people. I didn't expect it to um, really take fire and explode the way it did and expand. And I was humbled by that. And uh, in the beginning, there was a lot of strife and uh, enemies from all sides. Uh, and um, I am a very determined person and can be ruthless if I have to be. Uh, but loyal and kind uh, and protective of friends and allies. Um, but in fighting that through, I recognized a type of mirror effect that as I isolated the traits of Luciferianism, what does it mean to be a Luciferian? Devoid of mysticism, but the core traits, I found that I was mirroring that in my struggles. So... It was this double affirmation and this kind of ascension or apotheosis. So today I have the luxury and the ease of presenting my works, uh, not as from the early days where each book is a journey upon my initiation in one phase, but now I have a body of work that relates to here's where you start and here's where you can go. So let's start with that. The work book Apotheosis. Uh, originally was Wisdom and Vias Forest um, contributions by my highly brilliant wife, uh, Hope Marie, who really assisted in the uh, pragmatic articulation of Luciferianism. Um, there was also contributions from uh, someone else who and that was removed an upgraded work, Apotheosis, was published, which we will have a new edition at some point uh, in the next year or so. Now, Apotheosis is all about the step-by-step -step beginnings of recognizing, do you have the traits of a Luciferian? Do you identify this with this? Is it something that is you don't seem to fit with, or is it something that you can grow with? You might not have every single one, but a majority. And in this sense, apotheosis starts in the very beginning of what are the 11 points of power? What are the traits of Luciferian? Ah, you have these, you don't have them, or you have a few, you can expand upon that. Everyone is unique as a vessel of the Luciferian current. And then apotheosis moves into the triad of the morning star, which is a structure of recognizing where you're at in your journey, your initiation with liberation, illumination, apotheosis. And it's a cycle that continues throughout life. It's not just, uh, oh, I've achieved this level. No, it's actually applying, applying uh, the points of power, the philosophy within your mind, within your imagination, and aligning that and gaining the skills to direct energy and by force of will and discipline uh, transform yourself into uh, based on the symbol of the fallen angel of Satan, of Lucifer, of the Watchers, whatever it is you identify with as an archetype or symbol or spirit, Lilith, Hecate, all of these are within the pandemonium of the adversarial path whether they're uh, light or dark or both, and most of them are balanced that way. So apotheosis goes through the pra basic practices of meditation, of, of structure, of what ritual means, of tools, etc. So if you're coming from any other avenue in occultism, whether it's Satanism or something else, Apotheosis is where you start because if you don't have the philosophy and apply it consistently, consistently, and observe the gradual transformation, then if you just practice or perform rituals without 
the foundations, you're going to not have a productive or beneficial time. It could be dangerous, it could be um, uneventful, um, but if you apply apotheosis, that's the foundation. The next work, which goes with apotheosis, is a work called Aramanic Yoga. Aramanic Yoga is a key or structured meditation practice working through the chakras in relation to the um, demonic ancient Persian archdevas or devas of Araman, um, but also techniques of uh, raising uh, Shakti Kundalini, uh, the union, infernal union of uh, Samael and Lilith. Really an excellent uh, book, if I say so myself, uh, for the simplicity, simplicity of practice. Um, next, we have the Bible, The Adversary. And this was originally in 2007. It was uh, being prepared before that, but 2007, and then we had uh, the 10th anniversary uh, edition in 2017. There will be a new edition in a few years. This is really the lore of the adversary and the encompassing more satanic gnosis of the left-hand path. It's not for the faint of heart or those who shy away from embracing darkness uh, and discovering the light uh, is not outside you, but within you as a torch. Bible the adversary is essential once you have the idea and, and, and basic flow of apotheosis. And in the adversarial path, Lilith, Samael, Araman, Oz, the demonic masculine and feminine are equal and balanced in that way. And those symbols and deeper meanings are presented in Bible the Adversary and those works on that type of alchemy with the Triad of the Morning Star. An older work which is still meaningful, beginning Luciferian magic, it goes into some very uh, foundational things from around 2007 or 2008 uh, to really structure ritual practice and various types that are uh, presented there. Um, I will go to next a work which is Fallen Angels. This is dedicated uh, through the majority of the grimoire of the Book of Enoch of the Watchers in chapter 69 of the uh, Enoch um, going through the methodology and the tradition of Luciferian witchcraft, which is uh, derived from old lore based around the fallen angels or watchers who illuminated humanity. That's what this grimoire is, and I carefully um, really studied the etymology, the origins of the names of the watchers that are presented in the Book of Enoch, what they mean, their attributes, their associations, their traits, and reconstructing sigils based on those traits and the spellings, uh, the ancient Coptic and, and Greek and Ethiopian spellings of the fallen angels, the watchers. And also it goes into other foundational of black witchcraft or satanic witchcraft, exploring the medieval gnosis of the concept of the devil. Uh, but underneath the symbol of the satanic or the demonic, the devil, there is a deeper, more um, ancient, balanced, uh, creative, and destructive uh, Gnosis. So Fallen Angels is good after that process. This work, Galatia of Shadows, is kind of a journal and a workbook of my uh, over, and this is some years back, um, over 10 years, I think now, of that period from Goetic invocations and rituals from a Luciferian perspective. So the beginnings of Goetia of Shadows uh, really goes into the Hellenistic, Greco-Roman, um, Gnostic, Hermetic, Neoplatonic lore that is found in Luciferianism and the importance of the daemon of reestablishing Azazel instead of 
the Judeo-Christian or Hebrew names of Yahweh, but rather names of the adversary of calling spirits and so and such. So if you're interested in Goetia and Luciferianism, that's a good work. Um, I will go into now Dorauga. For those interested in Persian, uh, what's Yatukdinal, which means witchcraft, it's primal sorcery, um, or commonly called Devayasna, which in Avestan translates to demon worshiper, or Deva worshiper. It's not worship in the sense that most would think it's actually uh, from a Luciferian perspective. So the powers of Araman, the adversary, Az or Jeh, which is the demonic feminine, and the archdevas are explored from history from their Vedic origins as the Vedic um, Ashuras, as gods of war and conquering balanced deities, violent but balanced, to then the Zoroastrian demonization or next phase of the devas where they are satanic powers. So there's a balance in that. Um, essential for those interested in that avenue of primal sorcery. The demons of Solomon, uh, a grimoire based on the testament of Solomon, um, exploring the third or second to sixth century and before that um, demonology and magical practices of Palestine, Greece, that whole ancient Near Eastern region, uh, the original Goetia, if you will. Um, an excellent work for those seeking to understand the ancient world demonology and also how it can be approached in a modern sense. So understanding my earliest works, um, Book of the Witch Moon, good for those seeking forbidden black magic, the earliest, most uh, raw essence of Luciferian magic is found in this, and this uh, was written in 1999 with subsequent editions. Uh, uh, up until 2005, but this explores and answers a lot of questions that people would have as to the more uh, shadowed origins of Luciferianism from my journey. Um, Luciferian witchcraft, which outlines my earliest forging of the modern Luciferian witchcraft tradition as we were practicing it in Houston, and it's a record of that time and the journey that I was going through more than a complete study, an academic avenue like the other works. My most intensive, detailed, deep study is Dragon of the Two Flames. It's based on the demonic magic of the gods of Canaan, but also uh, Syrio-Egyptian, uh, Northern Mesopotamian, Palestinian, Hebrew, and it goes into the uh, Canaanite gods of Baal, uh, Leviathan, El, um, Chemosh, um, Beelzebub, Astarte, Ashtoreth, uh, Mot, the god of death, uh, Horanu, uh, Resheth, the plague god who's also Apollo. The earliest practices and how the Canaanites practiced, how they offered incense, their methodology of practice and how we can do it in a modern sense. I also have the Ugaritic alphabet and the Moabite uh, and some Phoenician uh, language or uh, translation scripts that you can use in your magical workings if you're so inclined. Sabeti, Mesopotamian magic and demonology. Basically understanding Babylonian magic, sorcery, demonology from a Luciferian perspective based on academic structures focused and then elevated within a Luciferian lens. Lilith, the origins, Lamashtu, Pazuzu, Marduk, Tiamat, the powers of chaos, uh, the Yudoghul or the uh, Sabeti, the seven uh, demonic gods. All of this is in that for those interested in ancient Assyrian and uh, a very intensive working. 
based on the origins of my earliest Luciferian inspirations. Understanding what I did carry on was uh, from a obscure English or Scottish 1950s Luciferian, one of the first to use that in the sense Charles Pace, this grimoire is dedicated to him, Necromunion. It's Egyptian satanic magic. And this explores the earliest origins of Egyptian magic, but also from the teachings of Charles Pace that I incorporated very early on, which expanded uh, my work. This grimoire is dedicated to his memory and his, um, at the time, oppressed works because they were, quote, satanic or Luciferian, but they're highly inspirational and strong if you actually read them. Uh, Hakadi and the Black Arts, uh, a grimoire which um, really took me through the journey of the necromantic um, up until uh, my mother's uh, understanding that she had cancer and death. This grimoire came out before but it was during leading into this phase. Uh, the grimoire explores Hakade and her aspects as the dark goddess in the underworld. A highly encouraged grimoire as it is based in uh, etymology, ancient mythology, the academic origins, and the modern interpretations of ancient Hellenistic magic. An older book, if you want to expand from the underworld into the gods of, let's say, Zeus, Sabazius, Dionysus, is Magic of the Ancient Gods. I'm going to get to two more titles real quick, and then we will end this video. For those interested in vampire magic, that is energy magic, dream projection, uh, when people think of shadow people, uh, vampiric meaning underneath the symbol of the vampire, the Grimoire Akaru. Not for the common mainstream, if there is such a term or thing, Luciferian. This is for those seeking the truly intensive dark path. Another work, Sekema Pep, which has a new edition coming, which is an expansion from Akaru exploring the origins of vampiric practice as a minor and obscure foundation in Luciferian practice. It's not of the uh, encompassing traditions, but it is there. I hope this helps you. Visit the luciferinapotheca.com. The books are under uh, Michael W. Ford, various ones. You can find them uh, in numerous places. Take them, begin, and read and study them to your own pace and apply them and adapt them in your own way. Uh, I look forward to more gates opening to the viewers of the Luciferian current and bringing forth the pandemonium again. Banama Arama.